Hello everyone and welcome to the round glass review for the Quantaray LD 70 through 300 mm f4 through 5.6 autofocus macro 1 to 2. I've lost what I was saying. Anyway, this is the review for that lens. That's quite the name. So this lens it was branded Quantaray. Now to the best of my knowledge, Quantaray doesn't or didn't, I don't know if they're still around make their own lenses, but that they would rebadge lenses from other makers. So I understand that this specific lens came in two versions, made by either Sigma or Tamron, and potentially there are also, by the way, two versions of the Sigma lens. Now the difference between those is apparently indicated by the filter thread. So the, the 58 millimeter version is reportedly the Sigma and the 62 millimeter is reportedly Tamron. That also jives with the cosmetic build of Tamron branded and Sigma branded versions of this lens that I've seen over the years. Another difference is that with the most of the 58 millimeter thread versions that I've used, you can use the macro focus capability at 300 millimeters only, where all of the 62 millimeter thread versions I've used have macro focus from 180 to 300 millimeters. I do currently have a version of this lens with a 58 millimeter thread that allows macro focusing from about 200 to 300 millimeters. So there is some variation in that across the production runs of this lens spec. So I found some conflicting sources on when this lens was introduced with one source indicating 2006 and another source indicating 1994. I bought my lens new in 2009 or 2010. I tend to believe the 1994 date as I found online reviews of this lens dating back to 2001. Typical uses for this lens are going to include portraits, for which, by the way, it is particularly good, especially the Tamron version, sports, and wildlife for the photographer on the budget. You can do astrophotography with this lens if you can stabilize it for a minute or two. The slower maximum aperture does mean you need a good mount, a good tracking mount, or a good tracking camera, like some of the Pentaxes have built-in sensor movement for tracking. For your bottom line up front, I've used seven or eight copies of this lens, two or three with the 62 millimeter front thread and the balance having the 58 millimeter front threads. As a general rule, the 62 millimeter threaded versions have performed better for me but and have also provided that longer macro focus range whereas with the exception of one of the 58s they only ever focus for macro at 300. For this video most of the images were taken with a 62 millimeter thread version of this lens. For the images that were taken with a 58 millimeter version of this lens I will put an asterisk in the top right corner of the screen when those are displayed. Now for nothing that a little bit of Google Foo couldn't do for you, the focal length and AOV are 70 to 300 millimeters, which corresponds to an angle of view of 34.2 to 8.2 degrees on full frame, with a corresponding APS-C value of 105 to 450 millimeters and a 15.3 to 4.6-ish angle of view. The aperture range is f4 to 5.6, depending on your focal length, f4 being 70 millimeters, f5.6 being 300, to as stopped down as far as f32. The element and group count are 13 and 9. The filter sizes depend on maker. The closest focus is 95 centimeters in macro mode, and for those of us in the US, that is about 1% the length of an American football field. It has a screw drive autofocus motor, and it originally came in all of the autofocus SLR mounts, Pentax K, Canon EF, Minolta A, and Nikon F. The dimensions are 116.5 millimeters by 76.6 millimeters, and it weighs in at a surprisingly light for a lens of this size, 435 grams. My first tip relates specifically to the 62 millimeter thread version of this lens. This version is great from 135 to 250 millimeters and it really peaks around 200. In that portrait range of focal lengths, it is darn near as good as a decent prime lens. Across that top performing range, which is right around 200 to 250 millimeters, f8 is consistently the best and sharpest setting. 
If you wanted to pick a single best setting for this lens and just like tape it in place so it could never be used in another setting, I would recommend you go with 200 millimeters and f8, which is a stellar setting for portraits with this lens. My second tip is to use this lens in the 62 millimeter thread version. Consistently for me, that version performed better than the 58 millimeter version. Also, all of the 62 millimeter thread versions I've used had macro focus in that larger range. The macro function, which is actually just close focus and not true macro focus, is highly useful with this lens and having that close up focus range that extends from 180 to 300 millimeters makes that function significantly more useful. Of all of these that I've used, the 58 millimeter lens seems to be more consistent in terms of image quality across the entire zoom range, while the 62 millimeter version has less consistent performance, but peaks with substantially better performance. So what I mean by that is for the 58 millimeter thread version, images were about the same general quality from 70 to 300 millimeters. For the 62 millimeter version, image quality from 70 to around 135 millimeter was on par with the 58 millimeter version's image quality. Then from around 135 to 250, almost on the nose, by the way, for those two readings, the 62 millimeter version was substantially better than the 58 millimeter version. And this is across the many, many of these that I've used over the years. Then the 62 millimeter version from 250 to 300 millimeters is considerably softer than the 58 millimeter version and honestly is almost so soft that I hesitate to recommend using the 62 millimeter version of this lens beyond 250 millimeters. Now, asterisk on that, in close-up shooting at 300 millimeters, this, the 62 millimeter version of this lens is very good. As for uses with this lens, wildlife, portraits, sports, those are all really great options and it handles all of those subjects pretty darn well. The only subject I'm gonna actively recommend you don't try with this lens is architecture. And that's solely because you need to be so far away from the building if you wanna to try to get the whole building in your scene that you are likely to experience UV scattering and particulate softness in, uh, in the air between the building and you, and that is likely to affect your image quality. Insofar as I can tell, Quantere does not or did not publish their lens diagrams. The diagram you see here is based on the Tamron AF 70 to 300 millimeter at 4 through 5.6 DILD macro, and I understand that to be the 62 millimeter thread version of this lens, or maybe most accurately, the lens in this review from Quantere is a slightly earlier version of that Tamron. So this diagram may not be completely accurate or perfect to what the actual lens in this review looks like on the inside. But let's take apart what this lens's name means. AF is for autofocus. LD is for low dispersion optics, meaning that it, the lens uses glass elements, which are purplish in this figure, which are made of low dispersion glass to help reduce color fringing. Is it perfect? No, far from it. This lens really does color fringe pretty severely in some conditions. Then the last term in the lens's name is macro. Now, I will not personally give a manufacturer a macro designation if they're not reaching one-to-one -one in lens. Anything short of one-to-one -one is honestly, it's just a good close-up lens and I'm going to die on that hill Good day, sir or ma'am. So this is not a true macro lens. This is a close-up lens. And that close-up function, by the way, is very good for photos of things like insects, which are nearby. And you could also, in theory, use it at the 180 millimeter range for very, very tight portrait photos. I tested this lens's breathing at all three of the main focal lengths, the most important ones. And for me, those are 70 millimeters, 180 millimeters, and 300 millimeters. I also tested breathing from closest focus to infinity, as well as at a more realistic use showing breathing over a range of about 0.75 meters in total focus throw, as should be expected given the significant amount of lateral movement in this lens's entrance pupil as you focus, the front element that is moving in and out, 
this lens exhibits substantial breathing. For the close-up breathing samples, I included photos taken at each of the three focal lengths I noted. For the, the infinity to closest focus, the full, full range breathing, I included photos taken at 70 and 300 millimeters focal length. And I think that does a decent job of showing the amount of breathing that this lens creates. In the case of, by the way, the closest to infinity at 300 millimeters, what it actually shows is the way that this, this lens blurs the subject out of usable focus. And I believe that those photos were taken at f32, by the way. The aperture is stepped at full stops on the aperture ring and half or third stops with your DSLR, depending on how you have your DSLR configured. The front element both rotates and moves in and out dramatically with focus and zoom. The focusing ring itself is stationary, however, as is the zoom ring. Now with the zoom, the front element moves in and out even more than when you're focusing. Focus throw is 90 degrees without engaging close-up mode, 170 degrees with close-up mode engaged. The zoom throw is 90 degrees. Focus damping isn't really applicable to this lens as it's meant primarily for autofocus use. The ring has no resistance whatsoever and focus responds immediately. The lens does use a screw drive focus motor, so using autofocus during video with on-camera audio means that that motor will be audible on your video. Also, even if you're not using autofocus, the motor gears as they engage when you manually focus does make a soft whine which could potentially be picked up by on-camera audio. Sharpness is quite good in a limited range, roughly from 135 to 250 and from f5.6 to f8. This lens is a bit soft when zoomed closer or further than that range, and also with the aperture set wider or smaller than that range. This lens has a fairly limited peak usability in line with consumer grade lenses. Color fringing can be quite severe on this lens, especially in harsh light and where contrast and shades change dramatically. Purple fringing is most common and can be controlled in post with some RAW or JPEG slider adjustments. In, even in soft light, fringing is less to a non-issue. The close-up function on this lens is spectacular with a 1-2 to two magnification at 300 millimeters when focused as close as possible. The copies of this lens that I used do perform well in that macro range, especially in even light. The macro zoom can amplify color fringing in harsh light or conditions where color fringing would be likely to occur anyway. Build quality is suitable for and commensurate with consumer grade lenses. It has a lot of plastic, which keeps the cost and weight down, but also can allow these lenses to wear out a bit sooner. My Pentax and Minolta mount copies of this lens have held up well, but when I've had these arrive in camera kits that I've bought online, they are around 30 to 50% of the time DOA, and that's often due to autofocus motor issues. Contrast is very good, and not a lot of work is needed to make images pop, which stands to reason as the intended market for this lens would be casual photographers who likely aren't doing a lot of work in post. Aperture shape and blade count is a nonagon with nine aperture blades that create 18-pointed source point stars. Out-of-focus area characteristics have been panned a lot in a lot of the reviews I read online about this lens, but I won't lie, I find them pleasing. There is nothing distracting in the blurry areas, even when backgrounds are chaotic, such as with a chain link fence. To test light loss, I set the focus at infinity, pulled up a white screen on my computer monitor, and photographed it at 70 millimeters with all of the full stops from 4 to 32. At f4, light loss is noticeable. By f5.6, it's largely gone. At f8, the performance is great. Balance with cameras is, by zoom standards, decent as the lens has a primarily plastic barrel which keeps the weight down and places the center of gravity nearer the camera. This lens, by the way, balances well with every SLR and DSLR I've used it on. The best compliment I can give this lens requires a bit of behind the scenes channel knowledge. Most of the lenses in this series go up for sale shortly after I finish the videos.
I don't need a box or many boxes full of lenses that I won't use again as I focus on making videos about other lenses. So understanding that, this lens will remain in my kit for a long time. I like this lens a lot. It's my go-to Pentax telephoto zoom. The low weight and relatively compact size make this an easy lens to carry in any camera case. Quantaray did a great job of sourcing this lens. It performs well in many settings, and for those of you looking to get into portraits on a budget, it really shines as a portrait lens. This lens handles subjects, especially people, in a flattering manner. Some reviews have bemoaned this lens's, air quotes, slow, maximum aperture range compared to f2.8 lenses. But that sort of misses the point on this lens. The, air quotes, slow, f4 aperture, which is a staggering one stop slower than an f2.8 lens, also drastically reduces this lens weight and size. As a general statement with exceptions, you'll likely use this lens or an f2.8 lens at or around f8. So what does the added stop of speed buy you except an emptier bank account and more carry weight? This lens handles very well and takes stunningly sharp images in its ideal focus range. Wider than that ideal range, it still performs very well and would be worth recommending. The Quantare 70 through 300 mm f4 through 5.6 LD macro is a film era, nearly vintage now optic, that, with some use and care, holds up well on both full frame and APS-C digital sensors. As an affordable light lens for wildlife and portraits, it's awesome. Like a mechanic who specializes in 1980s German diesel engines, this lens is a specialist. Sure, it can do things outside of its best range, much like that mechanic could likely fix a somewhat newer Dodge Ram with a Cummins, but that's not really where they shine. 